Ryan Elliott for ID Boxing with me ringing on to David Diamante. David, welcome back to Newcastle. How are you? I'm great, Ryan. It's great to see you. Uh, it's great to be back in Newcastle. Welcome back. And now let's talk about the fight. Firstly, we just had the way in there. Cyrus Pattinson headlining against Chris Jenkins. Six fights in. Great step up. It is, man. It is. I mean, but I think Cyrus is ready, man. He turned over a little bit late. He's got a big amateur pedigree. Uh, tough guy representing the North. Be great to see him in action. You've been all around the world. We always talk about the fans here getting behind their own and being very passionate people. Where does this rank among the, the smaller venues in terms of passionate fans that you've experienced? Listen, it's got to be up there. I mean, we've had some great nights up here. You remember the Sandman and all kinds of stuff. We heard it today with these guys, you know, these guys getting on the scale. And, of course, there's, a, there's the, the fight for the English Heavyweight Championship and uh, the local guy got up and the, the crowd went wild. So, yeah, the, the Geordies uh, are up there for sure. Not just Cyrus, but a whole crop of Northeast talent on the card, all coming out the Berkeley Boxing Club, all coming through together at the same time. How excited should this region be about what could come and the potential of a stadium fight one day just down the road? Look, the Northern lads, they're, they're starting to make some noise. And like you said, the Berkeley, uh, Berkeley ABC uh, has done a lot of stuff. And I just feel like um, when you put in the work it, in years, it pays dividends, and we've seen that. And, and like you just said, all these guys from the north are coming up now, so we could have a lot of uh, big action coming. And we'll see Saturday night. That's why it's called Next Gen. This is the next generation of fighters. Solomon Dake has got his first title fight, the English title. Rob is made from up here. He's made a lot of noise this week. He's very confident. I'm excited for you to see what happens there. There's been a lot of talk. Yeah, I mean, look, it's a Nixon-Nil fight, and it's for the English uh, heavyweight title. So, like, you, to me, these are the type of fights I absolutely love. It doesn't necessarily have to be a big, you know, massive world title fight. It needs to be a proper, gr you know, grudge match, two undefeated fighters for, for an English title. I think it's going to be fireworks. That's a fight I really cannot wait to see. Just moving away from this card, uh, the Canelo Ryder press tour just winding down now. They did a two-part press tour. John Ryder paid his dues, been in the sport a long time. A very, very welcome fight for him, but a deserved fight as well. Well, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, look, no one will ever forget the fight in Liverpool uh, against Callum Smith. And, and, you know, depending on who you think won, a lot of people, the fans at least, uh, were behind Ryder on that one, thought that he won it. But he has paid his dues, and we've been doing his fights for years. Uh, the Gorilla's a great guy. I'm really excited for him, and I'm excited for that fight. I'm excited for Canelo to make his homecoming in Mexico, and I'm excited to be in the center of the ring with 56,000, uh, you know, fans from Guadalajara. It's going to be unbelievable. In terms of the, the way the styles all gel, Canelo we, we've seen doesn't mind trading, John Ryder likes to work in the pocket as well. Do you think this is going to gel into a really exciting fight? I do, I do. I think it's going to be an exciting fight. I think John is, you know, John's the type of guy, he wears his heart on his sleeve and he's going to go in there and he's going to give it his all. And, uh, and Canelo, he's going to want to make a big showing, you know, coming back and, and his first fight in Guadalajara for many, many years. So I think both guys have a lot to prove and uh, that's what makes a good fight. You mentioned Callum Smith just before. He's been ordered to face Artur Baturbiev. Now the WBC have made that official. Negotiations have started. Big ask for Callum Smith, but again, kind of opportunity you can't turn down. No, you can't turn it down. I mean, listen, he, 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 he won, won titles at 168, and now he's moving up to 175. Um, you know, better be is kind of the, the, the boogeyman at 175, but really not because also there's Bevel. Both very different styles. That's another fight that, that a lot of people want to see too. But I think Callum Smith is right in there. And uh, Callum, I mean, incredible fighter, great pedigree, long reach. So that it's a very interesting fight. And uh, if that gets made, I'd, I'd be really excited to see it. Again, a lot of these weight divisions have so many great fighters. Um, we need to have them fight. So that is one fight that I would like to see. And if they make it, you know, I'll be right there. It's been one of the problems we've had with modern boxing is these fights not quite happening. One fight we do have happening is Javonta Davis and Ryan Garcia. An absolute monster fight. How do you see that fight going? It is a monster fight. I love it. I mean, 135 is uh, one of the one of the the deepest divisions right now in boxing. So much great talent, whether it's Loma, whether it's Stevenson, whether it's Haney, you know, uh, and, and of course Tank and Garcia are right there. So I, I'm so excited that they made this fight. I cannot wait to watch the fight. Both guys uh, could really win this fight. Um, I think that Ryan, if he boxes and sticks to the plan, it could be very t difficult for, uh, for Tank. However, Tank has the equalizer, and Tank is also a very good boxer. It's a great fight. It's a mega fight. Can't wait to watch it. Fury versus Usyk. We're still waiting to hear, will it, won't it? I know everyone's tiresome of split talks and everything like that. It has gone quiet, which is hopefully good news. If the fight happens, how do you see the style match up? What can Usyk do to trouble Tyson Fury? Well, you know, look, 
it's a fight that, like you said, we need to, we need, we want clarity, right? And, and so with Usyk having three straps, Tyson having one strap, if they fight and they meet, we can have an undisputed. And that's what fans really want, because then we will know who is the heavyweight champion, you know, of the world. And, and I think that's the most important thing for the fans. That's what fans want. That's what I want. Um, it's a really interesting fight. It depends what kind of, you know, what kind of camps both guys have, what kind of shape they come in at it. But uh, I saw the other day that, that uh, Sugar Hill uh, has flown in. He's starting to uh, train Tyson. We know that Usyk stays training. Um, look, it's a great fight. I can't wait to see it. Um, you know, Usyk's calling uh, Tyson belly. Uh, Tyson calls him a cruiserweight. You know, both guys jawing back and forth again. It really comes down to the center of the ring. Um, we know that Usyk is a master boxer. Tyson also is an incredible boxer, and he is a big man. He's very big, he's tall, he's got weight, and uh, he's been punching, seems to be punching very hard uh, since training with, with Sugar Hill. So it's a great style matchup. Let's get it undisputed, let's see it. You've been fortunate enough to see a lot of Alexander Usyk's pro career up close. One of the, the best pound for pound fighters, a list of accomplishments, amateur and pro is ridiculous. Where does he rank among the best fighters you've watched live? You know, I think, I think Usyk, for me, one of the great things about him that makes him so wonderful uh, as a fighter is his mentality. You know, Usyk has a very strong self-belief. It's something that I also have as a, as a person. Of course, I'm not a fighter. I'm an announcer, I'm a compare. But I think it's very, very important. And, and I think Usyk has a, an incredibly strong self-belief. And I've seen that come through because most of his career, you're right, I, I've announced a lot of his fights over the years. Um, and he has done most of his work pretty much all of it in other people's backyards and it's a great accomplishment i mean when i the closest fight i've ever seen him in was against Maidas Bridis when he fought in latvia um and i did that fight and man what a fight that was he became unified champion and then when he fought gassiev in moscow another fight that i announced for him i mean it wasn't even that fight was incredible the build-up i mean it was you know russia versus ukraine which obviously now we we know you know but there was a lot of kind of uh, it was said there was a lot of tension and it was it was a really amazing build up the fight was actually kind of a fizzle because Usyk just outclassed Gassiev but you know Usyk just has that that really incredible self belief and i love that and that's what you need to be a champion uh, and he has that and i think that that will give anyone fits just talk about yourself obviously we saw the creed 3 premiere recently been incredibly successful you were in the movie what was it like going premiere watching it back you know, Ryan, it was just great. I mean, um, so a couple weeks ago, I flew to L.A. Uh, for the premiere and to be on the red carpet with Michael B. and, and all the other stars in the film. Uh, what a great cast and what a great experience. I mean, Michael B. Jordan is such a talent. To, to Obviously, as an actor, we've all seen his acting, but this was his directorial debut, and, and to, to watch him direct and act at the same time, what a talented guy. Uh, it was really an honor, you know, to be... Uh, to be in that film and um, a lot of fun. I've been in a lot of films, but this was this was a big one. You know, to be in a Rocky slash Creed film, it's kind of as a boxing person to be immortalized in a film like that is a massive honor. So it was great experience. We were talking before. That is the first thing you did after your accident. You told me. I'm sure you won't mind me saying that. That's what spurred you on when you were doing your rehabilitation. You wanted to make that. What was that like? Trying to get ready for a Creed movie on the back of that. Well, Ryan, it is one of the things. Several things spurred me on, but that was definitely one of them. You know. Uh, it was about, we started shooting about 52 days after the accident, and it was obviously, you know, with surgery and coming back was very, very difficult. And at first, I did not think I would be able to do the film because I couldn't walk. Um, but slowly, uh, you know, I got on a walker, and this is a whole lot of stuff that I don't want to talk about now, but I went through it. And one of the real motivating factors was I wanted to be in that film because, again, it's, you know, as a boxing guy, to be in a Rocky slash Creed film. Uh, it's such a big deal, and, and I really fought to get back for that. And it was the very first thing that I did. I mean, right afterwards, I went to San Diego for the Chocolatito fight, and then I came over here to England for the for the Mick Conlon and Lee Wood fight, which became, you know, one of the fights of the year and, and knockout of the year, stuff like that. But so 2022 really started with a bang, but it was very difficult. But when I got to the set... Um, the people were so incredible. And it was funny because there are a lot of the boxing people that were there that you'll see in the film. I don't want to spoil it and say who's in it, but a lot of great boxing people. On the call sheet that day, you know, people's names, who's the actors are, and my name was on it. And they were telling Michael B, they're like, 
well, Diamante is not going to be here. He's not going to be. And he's like, relax. He's going to be here. And they're like, he's not going to be here. And when I came in, you know, I'm, I'm going to get teary. I'm not going to talk about this because this was, it was, uh, it was a really tough time. And it was a tough moment. But I'll tell you, those people were lovely. And uh, Michael B. Jordan was incredible. He took me right in the center of the ring. He like hugged me. He said so many incredible words, which I, it's private. I don't want to tell you, but he was, he was just a lovely guy, and so was the whole cast. It was an amazing experience, and uh, yeah, so that film specifically is very special for me. I can see how much it meant to you, that moment of, of realizing you were going to be able to make it. Was, it. was it a strange feeling watching it back, the movie? No, I, no I, it, was, it was really exciting, you know, it was great. Um, I mean, it was at the Chinese Theater in Hollywood, which is probably one of the most legendary movie theaters in, on the planet. I've seen it for years, uh, Grauman's Theater, and I've never been inside, but to like actually go there and actually to be on the red carpet, to be in a film at the Chinese Theater, uh, wow, it was incredible. It was, uh, no, I, I did think about that for sure. It was, it was special and I did think about that, but um, I just was more watching it. I'll probably think about it more as I, if I watch it back another time. All right, David, thank you as always for making time for ID Boxing. I'm sure we'll catch you very soon. Appreciate it, thank you so much.